And when it was over, it was short, he said to me, you got me crying. And I said to him, it's all about love. Isn't that wonderful that you were crying? So the stations are that kind of thing. They really are. Don't be afraid to get into it. You'll find texts in here that are really fascinating. They're wonderful. And you realize, I think we've talked about it, but it's a while since I've done stations with you, that this derives from St. Francis of Assisi. People could no longer get to the Holy Land. The Turks now controlled it all, the Islamics. And so they made each church Jerusalem so that you could walk from one to the other. The Brazilians call it the Via Dolorosa. That's its name in Latin, the road, the way of sorrow. So it's okay to touch him, you know, and his suffering for us. So if I can invite you to stand. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace and peace of Jesus Christ our Lord be with you. You're welcome to follow us as we walk the stations, either coming out from this side to the middle or from that side to over the side aisle. Okay, but be at peace about it. Jesus came with his disciples to a country place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit down here while I go over yonder and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be saddened and exceedingly troubled. He said to them, my soul is sad, even unto death. Wait here, watch with me. He went forward a little while, a little, and falling prostrate, he prayed, saying, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass away from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. Let's pray together. Almighty and eternal Father, accept our prayer of thanksgiving for your beloved Son, our Savior and Lord. As we recall his sacred passion, send the Spirit of Christ into our hearts, we beg you, so that whether we pray or work, we might do all in union with Christ our Redeemer. Amen. Let's sing. Jesus, Lord God, First station, our Master Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Again, the high priest began to ask him and said to him, I, you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One. And Jesus said to him, I am, and you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. But the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him as liable to death. It won't say this in this particular text, but in a moment he's going to be accused of being the king of the Jews. And that's the point. He's like no other king, is he? Shall we pray the prayer at the bottom? All powerful and eternal God, for proclaiming the truth, your Son Jesus Christ is condemned to death by crucifixion. Stir up your love in our hearts so that we might be ever faithful to all that you have told us and fear nothing more than the loss of your friendship through sin. Amen. 
second station, Jesus carries his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. And Pilate said to the Jews, Behold, your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priest answered, I might add sadly, we have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. And so they took Jesus and led him away, bearing the cross for himself. What a tragedy. What a tragedy. Have I been a person who at some time have said, he's not my king. Have I done it by the way I live or think or act or touch people? But he really is my king and your king. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let's sing. We get and fallen is nobody bruised and swollen Jesus stripped and lay in pain the third station I'm getting old see Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. So you understand, we've talked about this over the years, that the flagellation was beyond description. And the Romans would tear a person apart. They'd kill you just by beating you. And the thongs, there were seven of them, and at the end would be bits of metal or bone. And when they struck you, these bits would dig into your flesh and you were torn. One of the mystics said that his arm was so torn it couldn't work anymore and accused him of having his power of divinity to help him do it. And in the movie of the making of uh, Jesus, the whole passion of, the, of Christ, uh, the hero, the guy who was taking Jesus' place, was hit by this once. He couldn't work for six weeks from just being hit once with the thongs. They tore him apart. It's part of the reason why he died so quickly. This was terrible. And yet it was awful in the sense of awesome. Why would God do that? Why would he become so frail, so beaten down? Wow. If anybody here has ever felt beaten down, your king understands. Somebody say amen. amen. Let us pray at the bottom there. O oh God, to free us from sin and weakness, your son, Jesus Christ, embraced his fearful passion and crucifixion. Strengthen us with our baptismal resolutions by which we renounce sin and Satan so that through the passion of this life's sufferings, we might rise to a new life of joyful service, free of all selfishness. Amen. Let's sing, church. Jesus met his grieving mother, she who made the Lord our brother. Now the sword her heart has pierced. The fourth station this tragic moment when Jesus and Mary meet on the way to his death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. In the
in the middle there, there's one of these texts from Lamentations. You know that the Old Testament's full of all these little pieces that point to this and to all of Christ's doings. It's about Mary. To what can I compare you, O daughter Jerusalem? What example can I show you for your comfort, virgin daughter Zion? For great as the sea is your distress, who can heal you? Now, a lot of enthusiasm about Mary as co-redemptrix and mediatrix of all graces are words not used in the last 50 years. But the fundamental feeling in the tradition is that she suffered with him. That's got to be absolutely common sense, right? She loves him. She's his only one. There's a hymn about the presentation where it talks about Mary bringing Jesus her toy <laughs> to the temple. It was her baby. And here he is beaten, smashed, ruined. She felt it. She remained with him. Every time we come to this room, we see her standing up there. She never backed down. That's her real point. She was faithful to the end, faithful to him. And she's our mother. Isn't that wonderful? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let's sing. Zion and stopped in hesitation. Fifth station, Simon of Cyrene is forced to help Jesus to carry his cross and then is converted. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. And when they had mocked Jesus, they took the purple cloak off, they put on his own clothes and they led him out to be crucified. And they found a certain passerby, Simon of Cyrene, coming from the country to take up his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, a name meaning the place of the skull. Now, Scripture says this is historical, that this happened. His sons are mentioned in the synoptics, Alexander and Rufus. Why? Because it's the paradigm of Christianity. You hear it all the time. You hear it at daily mass. You'll hear it on Sunday. You hear it on Good Friday. You have to take up your cross, he says, and follow me. But we don't want to do that. We want tailor-made crosses that are easy to carry. Maybe you don't. I do. And uh, it's taken me about two months to figure out that he's telling me I need to resign. Okay, big deal. What's the big deal? Let's do what he tells you to do. Let's be obedient to him. And is it a wonderful idea that he couldn't do it alone? Huh? He couldn't do it alone. He was too far gone. They knew it. And this guy ended up really being a hero, a reluctant one. So I guess there's hope for all of us. Let's pray at the bottom, shall we? Lord Jesus Christ, help us to see in the sufferings and shortcomings of our lives a share in your cross. Strengthen and console us in the belief that we bear all things in union with you who have taken upon yourself even our guilt. Let's sing. Brave but trembling came the woman, none but she would flaunt the Roman. Moved by love beyond her fear, 
that magnificent moment when somebody does something about this. Veronica comes out of the crowd and cleans his face. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Since you've had to put up with me in the past, the middle paragraph there from um, Sirach is one of my favorite texts. A faithful friend is a sturdy shelter. He who finds one finds a treasure. A faithful friend is beyond price. No sum can balance his worth. A faithful friend is a life-saving remedy, such as he who fears God finds. For he who fears God behaves accordingly, and his friend will be like himself. In the past, I've meditated that she was a stranger. I think she's a teenager. I think she's outraged by what's going on. But I've changed my mind. I do that a lot. She loved him. She loved him. And she could only do this, but she did it. And it could have cost her her life. These people didn't fool around. They thought Jews were nobodies. They, they saw them as the scum of the earth. And here they were, the chosen people. And Jesus says, you are my friends. Huh? Interestingly, if you do what I command you, I may not be anything of a friend of his, except that I want to do what he wants me to do. Let us all say to that idea, amen. amen. Let's sing. Prostrate on the cross, he crumbled. Flogged in body, he resembled. All our brothers poor and scorned. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. I love this station for the choice of scripture. The greatest prophecy is chapter 53 of Isaiah. So I'll do the first paragraph. It's a clear prophecy about this whole thing. Would you do the second with me? It was our weaknesses that he carried, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, someone struck by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the punishment that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. Oh, we had all gone away astray like sheep, each following his or her own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Shall we together? Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and uttered no cry. When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong nor spoken any falsehood. Lord Jesus, you shared in our weaknesses, you accepted our guilt. Grant us the favor of rejoicing over our human weaknesses so that in all we do, your strength dwelling in us may be shown to all others. Amen. Let's sing. May our sympathy for Jesus turn to Beloved, the eighth station, a magnificent station. Jesus meets and comforts the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Shall we do the first paragraph together from the text? 
There was following Jesus a great crowd of people, and among them were some women who were bewailing and lamenting him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. We think everybody was his enemy. That's not the case. He's a Jew, after all. He's being persecuted by the foreign imperial mess troublemakers. It was a thing we know now, sort of like a first class or a first um, Red Cross kind of thing. So we'd look after prisoners because they'd be so beautiful, brutal, totally beautiful, brutalized. So that was probably what was going on. What's he saying? Why is, what is he talking about? In one of the texts he says, if this is what happens in the green wood, what will happen in the dry? And he's talking about the fall of Jerusalem, which happened in 70 AD, and all the, he prophesied that whole thing. What would happen to them? Remember his thing? God help the women with children at the breast. Where will they go when this happens? The sense of uh, care for his own people. And today, we watch these women. They can only cry for him, but they loved him. It comes in different ways, doesn't it, huh? Let's sing. Jesus fell among in weakness, stumbling as we do to lead us through our sorrow. This is the ninth station. For the third time, he swoons, he collapses, he's affected all over. He can't go on. Let's just be still for a minute and picture him. The man who was wrapped in the Shroud of Turin, his nose is smashed. He couldn't protect himself. He fell down. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Master, we're sorry for anything we've ever done wrong in our lives. Help us to understand how much you love us, how much the Father cares for us, how much the Holy Spirit will always be with us. Thank you. Praise you. I wonder, Lord, would I have had the courage to help you? Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Master. Let's do the prayer at the bottom. You want to? Almighty and eternal God, you permitted your son to be weakened, crushed, and profaned so that he might rise from the dead, freed from the ravages of sin. To accept our weaknesses and failings as forerunners of our glorious resurrection in union with your Son. Amen. Let's sing. Stripped and cheered by his own station, Jesus stood in desolation. It's an interesting word, desolation. He is totally abused. The Jews were people like ourselves who valued the body, but they also valued privacy and modesty, and he's deprived of all of that. He's stripped of all his clothing. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. So why did they you know, gamble to get the clothing. Well, they had a right to do that. But the point was, his clothing was unique. The clothing of the high priest was woven in one piece, so like my tunic, if you want. In Portuguese, it's a tunica. I'm learning these things, right? But it wasn't in pieces and sewn together. It was woven at, like this at one time. Extraordinary concept. And Jesus' tunic is presumed to have been that. Why? Because he's the high priest. 
So even this dignity, the beauty of the garment, is taken away. Out of reverence for him, we portray him covered. He probably wasn't. And he is purity incarnate. He really has become one with us. There's no one in the world like Jesus. No one. So, at the bottom, let's say the prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, stripped of everything, you stood exposed to the jeers and contempt of the people whom you loved. Clothe us with genuine love of others so that nothing we suffer may ever fill our hearts with hatred or bitterness. Amen. Let's sing. Pierce the hands that blessed and heard us. Pierce the feet that walked to free us. Walk the hill of Calvary. The eleventh station Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. There's a number of studies now done recently. I saw one on TV maybe a year ago. And then there was the blasphemous thing that the, the Nazis tried to see how it would work. Because Constantine had forbidden crucifixion. So we didn't know how it worked. Okay. The nailing through the hands. The Hebrew word for hand and wrist is one word. So the prophecy they have nailed, they have pierced my hands and my feet is fulfilled. But most likely it was through the wrist. And they were experts at this. At times they crucified thousands of people at once. So it would be terribly, outrageously painful because it would pierce that nerve that goes right to the brain. And he would be crucified very much somewhat like it is on the cross here, but much more like this. And he would have carried the cross piece. Now, he, some people were carrying both the upward and the cross, but the upside, the, the steepes, would have permanently be a gallows place. It was outside the city. So the condemned would carry the cross piece. The estimation, it weighed 75 pounds. You've heard about how badly he was beaten. So he's in terrible shape. So what they do is they nail him to this cross piece. And so the cross looks like a T. But there's a dowel and a groove, okay? So the cross piece fits in. Boom. Then they pump up the knees and nail him on the instep. However, they have found, it, found two pieces of human remains where the nail went through the ankle. So he could have been crucified astride the upright. You with me? And in the case of those two people, they didn't bother to take out the nail. They just chopped the foot off. They did that to St. Peter. We now have his bones. They finally found them. And when they found them, they couldn't figure out why does he have no hands and no feet? Because they didn't bother taking out the nails. They were a brutal outfit. This was terrible stuff. He can inhale... But as time goes on, he becomes tetanus. That's Jim Hickey's word. And he can't exhale. His lungs don't work. And the only way he can continue to stay alive is to boost himself up or pull himself up. But you understand how he's been crucified. So he can only do that. Seven times he speaks from the cross. Father, forgive them. Hmm. They know not what they do. It may have taken him a while to get that all out. Because he had an awful job getting exhale, which is what we used to speak with, right? And yet he continued to say that. Remember with Mary and John. They are brief, aren't they? Woman, behold your son. Behold your mother. He's a tough guy, Jesus. He's wonderful. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's sing, shall we? Life eternal, death defiant, bowed his head, the world was silent. Through his death came life anew. 
the twelfth station, Jesus Christ, the eternal God, Son of the Father, with the Spirit and the Father, the eternal Trinity, God Almighty, dies a felon, a criminal, on a hill in a far-off country, unknown, uncared about, except by his own. But he dies on the cross for you and for me. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Let's take a moment. St. Ignatius tells us, put ourselves in the scene. There's Mary, there's John. The military are all around. The women are there. He's struggling to stay alive. And finally it's over. He's dead. He's dead. He's given us a great gift. He alone can call God Father, but he has made us the people of himself so that we can call God Father. Let's do that. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Beloved, let's sing. Stunned and stricken, Mary, Mother, in your arms was placed our brother. Thirteenth station, the body of the Lord is taken down from the tree and placed in the arms of his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. I think you know I like words. What was that? Stunned, stricken. That's Mary. You know what? He's safe now. We know from the creed and from our faith that he goes to the land of the living who cannot get to heaven. So the, the dead who have died but are not dead, their souls are alive. Peter says he preached the gospel to them. <laughs> Would they accept him? English language, Middle Ages calls it the harrowing of hell. Now you plow the ground and you break up the clods with a harrow. He opened up the whole thing to all of those who lived before. But she was alone. She's in pain. And aren't we blessed to have the Pieta in Rome? You have, have gone there and seen it. Magnificent. She's pretty young. She was pretty young when she had him. She's special. Hail, Holy Queen. Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O holy Mother of God. Let's may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. I told you I'm getting old. Let's sing. Jesus, Lord, your, your gift accepted. In three days you resurrected. Fourteenth station, the Lord's body is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Would you do the first paragraph with me? Joseph of Arimathea, 
took the body of Jesus and wrapping it in a clean linen cloth, he laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn out of rock. Then he rolled a large stone against the entrance of the tomb and departed. You know, at the bottom there, that prayer to Almighty God, I've often been struck. There was a, a novel of, of a Boston situation called The Edge of Sadness. It's an interesting term, isn't it? And there it is, on the edge of sadness, when all seemed lost. For them, it all seemed lost, didn't it? Didn't it? You know, lots of our people feel that. I sometimes think that people who lead us are like that. When I first met uh, Sean O'Malley, it it seemed to me that he carried everybody's burden. (laughs) He was sad. But he saved us all. He did the job. On the edge of sadness, when all seemed lost. Well, you seem, you restored us to the Savior we thought defeated. So God has saved us. We don't have to worry about that. But we want to follow him well. So let's sing and we'll talk about the resurrection, shall we? Jesus risen, be our hard to see the picture for most of you but it's interesting the 12 year old Jesus here is clothed in glory if you've ever noticed it and if you walk up close and take your time with him and with Mary they follow you their eyes do but St. Joseph's doesn't St. Joseph does what it says in chapter 12 of Hebrews fix your eyes upon Jesus And Joseph is telling us, do that, because he's not dead. He is risen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Let's do the creed at the bottom together, shall we? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So, we're going to sing another song at this point? No. We're going to take out the Eucharist and then sing. So you should have a card, okay? I'd invite you to kneel, if you would, as I get the Blessed Sacrament. Adoro te devote, latens te itas. We adore you devoutly. Even though you are hidden, we know you are here. Praise your name, sweet Christ. Thank you. Praise you. Glory. Thanksgiving. Master, we've tried to kiss your wounds. Help us to have time with you now because you are so good to us. We want to honor you. We want to do it well, Lord. Bob, would you tell us, you, the cards are with everybody, so you have the song.
Let's take five minutes, just be quiet. Think about what we've done together. Think about him. How much do we care for him? How much we love him? How much he loves us? You may not be able to see it, but the incense is rising up. And the Psalms say, let my prayer rise like incense before you. Isn't it wonderful that we can pray, that we can be with God? And that nobody can ever take that away from us. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you, thank you.
Let's do the second hymn, shall we? Down in adoration senses fail to the everlasting Father and the Son who made us free and the Spirit God proceeding from them each eternally be salvation on all Blessing, might and endless majesty. Amen. You have given them bread from heaven, having with it in all sweetness. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with your Father in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let's do the divine praises as an echo. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. 
Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Sweet, sweet. 